Dr. Robert Lustig challenges the common notion that Alzheimer's is predominantly genetic, emphasizing that only about 5% of Alzheimer's risk can be attributed to genetics. The major portion, approximately 95%, is driven by environmental factors. His discussion highlights air pollution, microplastics, ultra-processed foods, and emerging evidence linking artificial sweeteners to dementia as key environmental contributors. This puts the focus on lifestyle and external exposures as modifiable risks for Alzheimer's, creating a hopeful narrative for prevention and mitigation. The environment's role in Alzheimer's is underscored by how toxic substances and poor dietary choices influence brain health, primarily through mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress. While some genetic factors like the APOE4 allele increase risk substantially, adopting healthier diets and managing environmental exposures can significantly diminish that risk. Dr. Lustig emphasizes the importance of acknowledging the environmental contributors rather than attributing disease fate solely to genetics. At the heart of the podcast is Dr. Lustig's concept of the hostage brain, a state where individuals become trapped by their neurochemical responses especially dopamine. Dopamine acts as a learning neurotransmitter, as well as the mediator of reward, reinforcing both positive and negative behaviors. Initially, a dopamine hit feels pleasurable, but chronic overstimulation leads to neuronal receptor downregulation, causing tolerance, the need for larger hits to achieve the same reward. This cycle of pleasure chasing pain and the subsequent biochemical adaptations induce addiction, making the brain a hostage to compulsive behaviors, especially related to sugar and processed foods. This dopaminergic dysfunction explains why people feel out of control when facing cravings or compulsions, and why awareness is insufficient in breaking free from addictive patterns. The hostage brain is a mechanistic model describing how biochemical addiction to dopamine-releasing substances or activities results in cycles of consumption and misery. Dr. Lustig also highlights that dopamine addiction is not exclusive to substances, but includes behaviors such as gambling and excessive social media use, illustrating a broader societal challenge. Dr. Lustig makes a compelling argument that sugar and ultra-processed foods are among the most damaging elements in modern diets. He warns that about 73% of products in American grocery stores contain hidden sugars, often under over 200 different names. Ultra-processed foods are characterized by excessive sugar, low fiber, lack of omega-3 fatty acids, emulsifiers that cause gut inflammation, and potentially mutagenic additives, all contributing to systemic inflammation and mitochondrial damage. Moreover, his scientific work with food companies shows that ultra-processed foods are mechanistically linked with numerous conditions including dementia, diabetes, cancer, and mental health disorders. Sugar, fructose in particular, interferes with mitochondrial ATP production, undermining cellular energy. This metabolic crisis drives chronic disease and cognitive decline. Real food, by contrast, supports metabolic health by protecting the liver, feeding the gut microbiome, and nourishing the brain. In recent research discussed by Dr. Lustig, the consumption of non-nutritive sweeteners like aspartame and sucralose is associated with increased risk of dementia, likely via the generation of reactive oxygen species. These dangerous oxygen radicals disrupt cellular energy mechanisms and promote brain inflammation. While natural alternatives like stevia or monk fruit lack sufficient research to confirm harm, the widespread use of synthetic sweeteners in many diet beverages raises serious concerns. The emerging evidence challenges the popular perception that artificial sweeteners are safe or better alternatives to sugar. Instead, they may contribute to oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction in the brain. Dr. Lustig's upcoming presentations aim to shed light on these mechanisms, encouraging caution in their consumption, especially among vulnerable populations. One of the most critical explanations from Dr. Lustig revolves around the mitochondria the cell's energy factories that convert nutrients into ATP, the usable chemical energy currency. Mitochondrial impairment due to environmental toxins, poor diet, or oxidative stress leads to ATP deficiency, throwing neurons into an energy crisis. This energy shortfall manifests as brain fog, irritability, depression, and can progress to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's.
Dr. Lustig describes how mitochondria inevitably produce harmful reactive oxygen species during ATP generation. Under normal conditions, antioxidants neutralize these byproducts. However, when overwhelmed by reactive oxygen species, cells downregulate energy production pathways to protect themselves, further reducing ATP output. Meanwhile, stress hormones increase energy demand, worsening the energy imbalance and accelerating neuronal dysfunction and death. This bioenergetic failure is central to cognitive decline. In discussing strategies to reverse dopamine receptor downregulation and break addictive cycles, Dr. Lustig introduces the concept of dopamine fasting. Popularized in Silicon Valley, this involves reducing all dopamine-stimulating behaviors, such as media use, sugar intake, and social interactions, for extended periods, e.g. three weeks, to allow receptor levels to recover. Though severe, this method can reset the brain's reward system, making healthier behaviors more feasible. While not everyone needs extreme fasting, the principle underlines abstinence and gradual weaning off sugars and addictive substances as key in recovery. Dietary approaches like ketogenic diets that eliminate carbohydrate intake can diminish sugar cravings by removing the offensive stimulus, providing neurochemical relief and metabolic improvement over time. Contrary to common belief, Dr. Lustig clarifies that exercise does not significantly reduce the desire for sugar, nor does it reliably cause weight loss. Instead, exercise's benefits lie in enhancing mitochondrial density, boosting brain trophic factors, increasing muscle mass, and reducing dementia risk. Physical activity promotes cognitive health and longevity by supporting synaptogenesis and neurogenesis rather than serving as a calorie-burning tool for weight control. He stresses how the calorie hypothesis, that weight loss is mainly a function of calories in versus calories out, is flawed. Weight management primarily depends on metabolic health and hormonal regulation, which are much more impacted by diet quality and sugar intake than exercise alone. This reframes how lifestyle interventions should be prioritized in chronic disease prevention. Dr. Lustig explores the neurochemical underpinnings of love, safety, and contentment, pointing to serotonin and oxytocin's vital roles. Serotonin, largely produced in the gut, fosters a state of contentment and suppresses inflammation, while oxytocin promotes feelings of safety and love. However, chronic stress and inflammation, often fueled by poor diet and lifestyle, impair both neurotransmitter pathways, methylating receptors, and reducing their effectiveness. This biochemical disruption contributes to loneliness, emotional isolation, and even intergenerational effects, such as impaired bonding in offspring of stressed mothers. The gut-brain axis, mediated by the vagus nerve, plays a crucial part in this system. A healthy diet that feeds the gut microbiome supports serotonin synthesis, enhancing emotional well-being and social connection. Dr. Lustig voices frustration with current public health policies, particularly the handling of food subsidies like the U.S. Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP. While sugary drinks heavily contribute to chronic disease, they remain purchasable with SNAP benefits, fueling obesity and diabetes. Lustig advocates for banning soda purchases with government assistance and redirecting funds toward healthier food options, yet political will remains insufficient. His remarks highlight the disconnect between science and policy and the commercial interests that impede progress. Despite accumulating evidence, food industry influence continues to thwart meaningful change, leaving vulnerable populations trapped in cycles of metabolic illness. The podcast discusses the mixed benefits and drawbacks of GLP-1 receptor agonists like semaglutide, ozempic. Clinically, these medications can reduce appetite and promote significant weight loss, making them valuable for severe obesity. However, they come with notable side effects, including gastrointestinal distress and potential long-term complications like gastroparesis. Importantly, weight loss through these drugs partly includes muscle mass, which is detrimental to overall health. From a neuroscience perspective, GLP-1 analogs reduce activity in the brain's reward center, dampening motivation for addictive behaviors, which is being explored for addiction treatment. Nonetheless, there are concerns about mood effects, including depression, underlining the delicate balance in manipulating reward pathways pharmacologically. Furthermore, the financial strain on healthcare systems due to widespread use raises questions about sustainability. 
Towards the end, Dr. Lustig touches on psychedelics as serotonin mimickers that can induce profound neuroplastic changes. He explains how psychedelics disrupt entrenched neural pathways, clearing ruts in the brain's circuitry to allow new patterns of thought and behavior, a promising avenue for treating mental health disorders. The analogy of a blizzard covering old ski tracks vividly illustrates how psychedelics can revitalize brain function. He emphasizes safety in psychedelic use, advocating for professional guidance and clinical settings to maximize benefits and reduce risks. This emerging field offers hope for addressing treatment-resistant conditions and improving well-being, complementing other strategies explored in the conversation. Dr. Lustig offers accessible guidance focused on reducing sugar and ultra-processed food consumption. Strategies include shopping around supermarket perimeters to avoid aisles of processed foods, avoiding shopping while hungry, and treating food labels as warnings. Especially foods listing sugar among the top ingredients should be considered desserts. Monitoring glucose responses with personal devices can educate individuals about how different foods affect their metabolism. His advice extends beyond dietary changes to managing stress and cultivating meaningful relationships, recognizing that emotional well-being and social connection are essential for sustainable health improvements.